I don't know about you, but at one point in my life, I actually believed it was more noble to be poor, to give all of my money away, to undercharge for my services, and to play small. What I didn't get at the time was that money can be a force for good. Good for you, good for others, good for the planet. So I've been on a journey for over a decade to heal my relationship with money and explore wealth in all areas of life. Today, I help aspiring coaches start what I call a freedom business, and I help established entrepreneurs ditch their scarcity mindset. I now see more money as more opportunity, greater impact, and the ability to do more good. I'm your host, Mindy Kinnis, and this is The Lucrative Society. Welcome, welcome. I am here today with my dear friend and total badass rock star, Mimi Du. Thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Mindy. It's an honor. I am super excited about this conversation, partially because Jim, your husband, was on this show earlier, and Mm. he told a lot of stories about how between the two of you, you were kind of the one who was more likely to say, hey, you know what? Like, we've got money. <laughs> we, can, we can spend it or, or have a good time. Whereas he described himself as more of the very, very ultra conservative person around money because he came from being a math teacher, went into the whole wealth management thing. But I'd kind of love to hear your perspective on that story. Like, talk to me about how you and Jim are different in terms of your money point. Mindy, I didn't expect that question right away, but I love it because money is very emotional as all of us know. It's deep, it's deep rooted in many people. It has to, um, it, it starts from childhood. It's, it's what they see from the parents, the modeling. So for example, for me, My father was an orphan in Seoul, Korea. And so I was a first generation immigrant. We came here with absolutely nothing, started off on food stamps. And, but my father was, this is the greatest country. If you work hard, anything is possible. So he came, he worked hard. He had this entrepreneurial spirit. I saw him make a lot of money and spend a lot of money. He was not good at saving. So I just always assumed you take risks, you work hard and money will come. And it's about experiences. So that was the way I grew up. And also um, my way of showing love is giving gifts. I love giving gifts. So again, all that takes money. Or I thought back then in my youth. Jim on the other hand, grew up with parents. He was the youngest. Uh, depression. So he was a depression baby. They were grew up in the Great Depression. So he was taught money is difficult to make. Every dollar you've got to pinch, save. So it was all about saving, saving, saving. And maybe when you have enough, then the experiences or a big vacation comes. So when we both got together, that was a challenge because I wanted to spend and um, it wasn't about things. It was about going on trips or going to um, a nice restaurant. And so it, it was all about the experiences where he was just like, wait a minute, wait a minute, we've got to have enough. So what the two of us had to come together and say, you know what? We both want experiences and we both want to save. How can we compromise? So that's what we've come together. And I push him, I push him to take risks and he pushes me to save. And we found a really good balance with that. Well, that's exactly what I love so much about the two of you is you do balance each other and there's great things to be learned from both sides of that equation. So the two of you together, I mean, you're well known as a power couple and like dynamic duo, but that's one thing specifically that I like so much is you're very different in that mentality and then you can work together to figure out that balance. So let's talk a little bit about, and first off, I would just want to say, 
I love it that you're like, oh, I'm surprised, Mindy. I'm like, come on, you know me well enough. <laughs> you know we're going to jump right I, in. What am I thinking? <laughs> My dear friend Mindy, no surprises there. <laughs> it shouldn't have surprised you. So I want to talk a little bit about your work now because you you both run Do Wealth Management. You're the president of that company. And I'd love to hear a little bit about what you're doing, first of all, and then also how that love of experiences and gifts and all that stuff that you just talked about, how does that influence you in your job there? Mm, Great question. So my particular role is I wear several hats and it's more on the operational side. So we're talking about the business efficiency. So there are several hats that I wear. I'm um, CFO. I'm COO. I look at expenses. I bring the team together, make sure that everyone fits. So I'm integral in the hiring and firing (laughs) process, which is not the fun part. And the experiences, that's one of my favorite things is as far as a unit, um, the team, things about team bonding. So we'll do fun things like, you know, your typical things like maybe happy hour and lunches, but it's also uh, going around and sharing something that that was a big win for everybody. So it's about making sure that everyone is seen and heard, which is super important to me. And then on the client side, we want to make sure that their experiences are not just a typical Thank you for being a client. Thank you for for the referrals. Thank you, thank you. It's about finding what's truly important. So we keep what's called a mind meister for each client. So it's about the relationships. It's about um, experiences. And so we try to really look at that and um, customize, you know, like the gifts or customize um, some kind of an experience. And those are the things that I have helped to integrate that you can see, I get so excited thinking about ideas when it comes to client experiences. So that's, those are uh, several of the different things that I do within the company. I love it. You're so people focused. We have many, (laughs) many stories where Mimi has come to me and or other introverts and like oh I have this amazing idea do you guys want to do this I'm like (laughs) um (laughs) it sounds amazing (laughs) but (laughs) maybe with a different person who's more of an extrovert (laughs) and you know what Mindy what I love about you is you're very clear in what you want to do and what you don't want to do and I so appreciate that because I will always I don't know, bring an idea and say, let's try this. Let's try it on. Let's do this. And I'm good. Um, I don't want anyone to ever feel obligated to do something. So with you, I don't have to ever second guess. (laughs) It's so true. I just have this look probably that, you know, I'm like, "Mm, yep. No, I love you. I love you, but no. (laughs) So, you know, as you were talking about just the, the way that you create experiences for your team, for the clients, I mean, really for everybody in your life, I've known you long enough and well enough to, to have seen it again and again and again, you, that is just who you are. It led me to another question though, about specifically the wealth industry. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me a little bit about women in wealth? Well, um, the challenging part is, first of all, there are a lack of women. Um, it's, it's It's not because women are discouraged to enter this industry. It's just been long and I'm not um, knocking it. It's just men who are very interested financially with the finances. That's, that's really the passion they felt in, in the role was to lead. And so much of that has changed. Women are amazing leaders. They want to get into finance. It's just the curve is so steep for women to enter. And once they're in, it's that big catch up. And the industry now is so open and so welcoming. So for example, I'm hiring advisors right now. And I mean, our bottleneck is looking for great advisors. 
And I welcome female advisors so much. It's just a hundred will apply uh, male advisors to female advisors to like five female advisors. And Is it really that that's big of a difference. That's big of a difference. And so that's the pool. I'm happy to say though, I just found a great advisor that's going to be joining our team who's a female, but <laughs> she's a female. It's, it's because she is the best. She is the best who recently interviewed. So yeah, there's a steep curve. It's, um, but things are changing. I'm happy to say things are changing, but um, for some reason, again, so let me uh, equate it to the medical professional field. There's a lot of women that are entering. It's more accepted and a lot of doors are opening. And, and so I see the skew, the difference in numbers, you know, narrowing where here, again, that gap is so big, but I feel that it's going to take some time, but I do feel that it, it's going to shorten. Unfortunately, it's going to be slow. Well, I'm at least happy to hear that it is changing and shifting. That's, that's good news. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions that I ask everybody on this show, because as you know, this whole thing is about really my own journey and then bringing people into that, that world of like, let me figure out wealth. Let me figure out money mindset because I had so many issues with it previously in my life. I want to have those conversations and also bring to the forefront, like, hey, we can talk about money. It can be a comfortable thing. We can tell the truth about where we're at and what's going on. I would love to know from you, how do you define wealth? Mm. So me personally, again, it comes from starting off of absolutely having nothing, food stamps, always my dad, you know, again, made a lot of money, but he spent it. And so it wasn't on the family. So we we're always as far as my mother and the kids, and I'm the oldest out of three kids, we were scrimping and saving, but I saw that it could, it could be made easily. And so for me, how I define wealth is I can walk into a grocery store. I don't have to look at the name brand or the price and I feel comfortable enough to buy it. So for me, that's my wealth where I'm not looking at every single price, price tag. Yeah, I think um, that's what Jim was talking about when he was like, I'm going to compare which one is like four cents less. <laughs> <laughs> like Jim, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Jim, on the other hand, is, um, yeah, he's a lot more price conscious. And um, again, because that's how he grew up and he feels more comfortable. He loves looking at the spreadsheet and knowing where everything is. That's his happy place is knowing <laughs> where the investments are and the happy place. For me, it's about letting go and not having to be so particular about the price. That's my wealth. And really my wealth is having the emotional love, the connections with Jim, my, my amazing uh, husband and partner in life and all the deep friendships that I have. But as far as money is concerned, I feel wealthy today because I can walk into a grocery store and just buy whatever I want to buy. Not that I love grocery shopping. You know, you and I have talked about that. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. And another thing is that I can find the who to help. So somebody to deliver, somebody to go pick up. So I feel wealthy that I have access to other resources, some uh, other people to help me out. I love that, especially for no grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about maybe an experience that you've had where you either got stuck in scarcity Mm -hmm. or potentially lost a lot of money that you weren't expecting to lose mm -hmm. or something along those lines. Because I find that in a lot of podcasts, it's really great to say, hey, let's look at how amazing you are. And mm -hmm. obviously you wouldn't be on the show if you weren't amazing and hadn't done incredible things in, in the wealth department. But I also like to share stories about how it's not always so pretty. This is not the social media real of like, here's my highlights. It's like, let's talk about real life. Cause I know it's not always perfect. 
And again, Mindy, that's what I love about you is let's talk about the real stuff, not not the fluff or what's out in the, the front stage, you know, for, mm -hmm. for most of, of the people. Um, I have failed so many times. I've been in so much pain, um, very deep, dark moments. And a dark moment was when my father had father and I had a huge falling out and it's what I call disowning him. He was always threatening me. Um, so I just finally, uh, nobody had got received a college degree in my family. And I'm so proud to say that I'm the first one. Yes. I went uh, not knowing the costs. So I started with, I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I wanted to go to school in Arizona. So I started off at what Jim likes to say, the Harvard of the Southwest, but what, <laughs> anyways, University of Arizona. My father and I had struggles. So I, I just disowned him and said, I will figure it out. I'm going to do whatever I can. I took three jobs. Money was so scared, scarce, so tight. I didn't know how I was going to pay for rent at times, how I was going to pay for food. I had to subsist on a jar of peanut butter. So still to this day, I can't eat peanut butter. That was just spoonfuls. My car was crappy, <laughs> crappy, crappy car. I was scared, but I was so damn determined to get that degree, I was gonna do whatever it was. So I worked three jobs. I, again, <laughs> subsisted. And you know what I had to do, Mindy? And that was the most difficult thing and it's still so painful is I had to reach out and ask for help. Ask oh, for it's the worst. The worst, okay. <laughs> because I, I was, I think at the time, uh, like 150 short for rent and books or, or whatever it was, I, I, I don't remember. So it was rent, it, and I, it's very clear. I reached out to two people. One was to my best friend's mom. She broke my heart. She said, no, I'm not going to help you. So then I had to crawl back to my, um, he, he is one, a, a father figure. He's, um, he passed away about 10 years ago. He took me in and he owned a nursery, a greenhouse nursery, he had a very successful nursery in uh, Albuquerque. He took me under his wing and he gave me a job. He created a position for me. But I told myself, I, I don't wanna ever ask him for help again. He's helped me so much. He was the only option. So I turned to him and you know what he said? What do you need? You don't ever have to pay me back. Um, he sent me the check because back then you couldn't wire and, you know, all the, uh, sent me the check. I was able to pay and I stayed in school. So I've had such deep, painful moments where I didn't know where I was going to get the next meal. I didn't know if I could pay for rent. I didn't know. So I've been there and it's super painful. And I always thought the worst thing to do was to ask for help. And I don't think that way anymore. And I sure as hope that if somebody ever reached out to me, that I could help them in the same way. Mimi, you're making me cry over here. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is an audio um, show, but uh, you can see I've got tears in my eyes. Yes, you, you do. You're, you're really moved right now. Because I agree with you. It, you know, I was kind of joking, like the worst thing is to reach out for help because it feels that way in the moment. And I, I've been there myself. I know that. But I love that you did. And I love that you had that cheerleader of a human being to be like, I got you. I, that is amazing to me. I love that so much. Those are the stories and those are the people and the experiences in our lives that are always just like, bing gratitude, <laughs> that person. Yeah, and I will um, forever deep in my heart. And um, yeah, when we, uh, he passed away 10 years ago at his funeral, I was able to speak and get up in front of everybody and, and just give a little speech of how grateful I was to him. That's awesome. That's- I know, I still get choked up still. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because- especially because having been there in those experiences and knowing how hard and, and how much shame comes with that and oh. guilt and all the, all the things that we 
we or society put on top of us and, and right. theory. Right. And then there's somebody who doesn't give a shit about any of that stuff and is like, I got you. Like, let's do this. You got this. So let's go. I mean, like, you don't even have to pay me back. It's, whew, I love people like that. I've had them in my life and I oh, mm. talk about those people all day. But <laughs> let's move on to a framework question that I ask all of my guests. Okay. It's based on the acronym HERB, H-E-R-B. Mm -hmm. You are a just total dynamo in terms of efficiency, getting things done, <laughs> uh, running all the things in the business. You also volunteer and have 48 billion other things going on that you manage so, so well. Uh, my audience may be thinking, well, I'd like to even do like a 10th of that. So how can I, how can I do it? So that's what this framework is all about. We're going to learn a little bit more about the detail of how you operate so that maybe we can, we can learn from you. So the H in herb stands for okay. habits. What are some of your habits, either daily, weekly, monthly? My habits, um, discipline is super important to me. And again, that came from a very young age and having to take care of everybody that if I didn't have discipline, things would not get done. So for example, I work hard to get a good night's sleep. It doesn't happen all the time, but I, um, first of all, start the night before is I try to wind down. Um, so that means I can't look at email. I can't. Um, and and I, I used to have a very bad habit thinking I'll catch up in the end of the night. And what I found out, Mindy, is that sets the tone for the next morning. And I wake up groggy. I don't get a good night's sleep. So I wind down. No email. No work after nine o'clock. You know, again, there are exceptions. I read a little bit. I, um, so it's, it's my time to prep is, is so then it happens the night before, then I get up at a specific, so I get up every morning at six. So that's the way it works out well for me. For me, meditation is, has always been a struggle. And so what I have accepted that is it's going to be challenging. It's going to be struggle. So what I've come to realize is I can do five minutes. So I do five minutes and I either listen to, in fact, your waking up app that, that I know you suggested. And, and I just listen to about five minutes. Sometimes I just can't go because, or I'll listen to the, the calm app and listen to some music. And then my first thing is I get a workout in. I know that's going to set the day. I feel really good. I eat healthy. So workout. So meditate five minutes, get a workout in. Uh, one other thing is eating well is very important to me. It makes me feel good. I know I've got a lot of energy. I know I need a lot of energy. So I eat well and I hydrate. And I'm not going to go into the diet specifics because I know everybody has a different philosophy <laughs> as far as how they eat. Then I prioritize. If I don't prioritize my day, I will get sucked into a vacuum of that rabbit hole of this needs to get done. Totally. And then all of a sudden, the things that are priority, they're shifted off to the next day. And, and I, I go crazy. So, so that's what I do is, again, try to get a good night's sleep, meditate five minutes, work out, prioritize my day, and just go. And then the thing um, that I try to do is put a lot of deep thought into what needs to be done rather than just trying to respond and react to things. So that's, that's something that's um, really important to me that I feel is a habit and a, and a discipline. Do you have a structure around that? Like Keith Cunningham's thinking time, or is it just kind of a, no, no. Have, you know, awareness yeah. of, I want to not react. I want to actually process and then respond it's the latter so um i need to do more I, I shouldn't say i need i want to do more thinking time that keith cunningham writes about beautifully in his book but no mine's not structured like that it's to take up for me it's more like you said the latter is to take a pause and rather than reacting it's it's what is critical what's going to move the ball forward that's 
Well, I mean, so, so good. So that's awesome. So moving on to the E, the E mm -hmm. in stands for environment. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know how you set up your physical space, whether that be your home office. I know mm -hmm. you said earlier that you, you had given up your office at the office. So I know. How you about your physical space. My physical space is I have to have room and I hate clutter. So, <laughs> so everything has to be neat and organized. Um, otherwise, to me, it's visual noise or visual chaos. And I feel like I can't work, I can't breathe, and it's suffocating. So I like things around me neat and clean. Um, in my home office, I, I, I love quotes. And so I have quotes around me to help me, you know, it's, it's motivating just that we all have days. It's like, I don't feel like working. I don't feel like doing another project. It's a challenging day. So the quotes help me and um, yeah, I hydrate. And then I also make sure that I'm not sitting in the chair for hours on end is I have to take breaks because again, I go crazy sitting in front of a screen for hours on end. So what I try and do is take breaks every 45 minutes. I think that is very wise. Could you maybe share one of your favorite quotes that helps you through those times of, I don't feel like doing this or doing another thing. Like what, what's one quote that inspires you? In fact, I've got uh, several that are sitting on my desk. So I love this Jim Rohn quote. Um, it's one of my favorites is don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Don't wish for a less challenge. Wish for more wisdom. I love Jim Rohn. So okay. that always, that always gets me going. <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot. I was just having a conversation earlier today about have it like not wishing for somebody else's problems you know looking at someone mm -hmm. else's life. Mm -hmm. oh well they've got like this so easy I'm like you know what they've got their own problems so you probably don't want those <laughs> so moving on to the R the R in herb stands for resources and okay. I love how much you love books <laughs> so oh books could be one of the resources but it also could be either a coach, a program, what, whatever, a, a video, anything. What are some of the resources that have had significant impact on you and that you would recommend to others? So I love books and I know Mindy, you <laughs> love, I mean, if I could even read a quarter of what you read, I, I just think what my brain could sustain and embrace. <laughs> anyway, okay, so that's another. You know, um, again, growing, I'm going to go back to my youth is um, there were a lot of challenges. So my go to was anger was to explode. I don't know. A lot of people go, they sound very or, or they look at me surprised or act surprised when they hear that. Again, um, the maturity and understanding myself and doing a lot of deep work, the first book that really um, helped me to say that it's me, it's up to me, and I've got to take responsibility, The Power of Intention. My Wayne Dyer was one of the first books that hit me. Then um, a few others, uh, Growth Mindset by Carol Dweck is, you know, for me, it's like being that perfectionist. It's like, it's, if you don't do everything absolutely right and get that a plus you're such a failure yeah, this and is reading that book growth mindset <laughs> it just really shifted it, it, it doesn't have to be it could be good enough it could be it's failing and saying it's okay and trying again so that that was another and also um one of the big things that when positive psychology came out in the early 90s you know it was kind of like what We've, we've always been studying depression and, and mental, you know, illnesses and things like that. And when positive psychology came out, boy, did I gravitate that, to that. And so um, one of the courses, that's when YouTube was kind of getting started too, back in the early night. And so it was like a lot of grainy film. There was a professor <laughs> at a Harvard. And again, he impacted me so much. He created a, a happiness class at Harvard and it was the most popular and well attended a class, Ben Tal Shahar. Again, he led me to the path of, wow, there's actual science to 
having a good life and happiness can truly be part joy. I should say more joy because happiness, I mean, they're all fleeting, but, but it's possible and there's science behind it. Because for me, I've, I've got that analytical mind that I need to understand it rather than just accepting it just to, just because someone says it's so. That's why you and I get along so well, because <laughs> like, do not give me the fluff. Oh, you want to talk about the heart? Let's look at the science. Let's yeah. talk about just all the fluff. I mean, you know, you came to my retreat, Heart Path. So you got my geeking out about <laughs> all of that stuff. And that was another thing, Mindy, that I, I uh, want to say is you opened my mind. I'm so glad that I attended your Heart Path. I mean, you gave us the science behind it because so much of that has always been such, woo, you know, and, um, or, and, and to me, I was just like, I don't understand it. Why? And, and you gave us the science behind it. And so you, that was another turning point too. I absolutely love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. So the final letter in our acronym here is the B. The B stands for beliefs. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your either core beliefs or just ways in which you see the world? Mm. My core, uh, gosh, I have so many core beliefs in that for me, they're loyalty, honor, truth, transparency, love. This is why you and Jim are such a good match. I think he said all the same things. <laughs> oh, did he tell? That's so funny. We do. I mean, we, we're always like loyalty above honor. You know, it's just the relationships. And so we know who our deep friends are. We know that our friends will challenge us and we'll challenge them back. But in the end, we'll come back and love each other because we are transparent and honest with each other. And so again, it's not about saying everything's okay, everything's surface. Uh, so those are my core values. And, and I just feel that today we're kind of just skirting around, you know, and, and um, you can't have these deep conversations with each other because the opposing sides, all they do is just get pissed off at each other. And I'm just like, what happened? What happened to the values? What happened to just being able to talk and just saying, I hear you, let's, let's hear each other, you know? And so that, yeah, so that, uh, yeah, beliefs are really strong. <laughs> they are. And what's awesome about you and about Jim is that anybody that knows you would probably be able to state those beliefs that you two hold without you even having to state them because you live them, you act them, you are them. So mm -hmm. that, that to me is, is so honorable. It's not about answering a question on a podcast about something that sounds good or using the right words or the, you know, what's, what's trendy now to say, but it's like, no, you are those things. So that is so awesome. Mimi, you know this, I just absolutely adore you. I want to know nice. <laughs> if our listener is interested in learning more about you and just seeing what you're up to, where would you like to send them? Let's see. Really, um, as far as the work, it's dowealth.com. Okay. And perfect. there are a few um, videos um, about relationships and things like that on YouTube if they do the search. Awesome. And just for the listener, do is spelled D-E-W, but I will link to all that stuff on my site as well. So they can check that out at lucra.com. Mimi, you're a rock star. Thank you so, so, so much. This has been awesome. Mindy, again, I absolutely adore you. So the feelings are mutual. Thank you so much for having me on. This was so much fun. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Lucrative Society. You can find free resources to create your lucrative life at lucra.com. That's L-U-C-R-A dot com. Or join my crew of rebel entrepreneurs as a member of the Lucrative Society, where you'll get monthly coaching directly from me and resources to grow your business and yourself. Lucra, where wealth equals well-being. <laughs>